Good morning, Victory Life Fellowship, and all you wonderful people tuning in again for another exciting time in the Word of God. I call it exciting because I have already prepared myself, and I know this is an exciting word for all of us today who understand the Word of God and use it the, the way God wants it to be used. So I'm glad you tuned in this morning, and I'm glad that you understand, uh, because we've shared it over, over, week after week after week, that uh, when you start out your day with praise and worship and uh, lifting up the Lord, like Psalm 34 says, and I went through a whole bunch of other Psalms today, all of them or a lot of them start with um, the same theme, blessing the Lord. And uh, uh, I like the one Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. What a wonderful Psalm. What a wonderful way to start the day. And it's not, you know, it's not that God just wants you know, you to just tell him how great he is all the time. What it does is it brings you into the spirit realm. When you magnify the Lord, you make him big. When you praise and talk about his works, you know, he becomes big in your sight, comes on the scene, and uh, it's just a wonderful time of the spirit of God meeting with you and causing all those problems to disappear. So we want to start on Thessalonians today. I'm calling this one Supernatural Power, and you'll see why in a second. Um, we uh, want to get into the Word of God that Paul shared with the Thessalonians. Very important word, especially during these times again. Um, in uh, 2 Thessalonians, if you have your Bibles, if you would open it up there, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about a time of trouble, and what had happened during this time is... Uh, uh, the people were receiving letters and false information and they were beside themselves, if I can put it that way. They were fearing and in a state of uh, just confusion. And I'll read it to you. And it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, But relative to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah and our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren, not to allow your minds to be quickly unsettled or disturbed or kept excited or alarmed, whether it be by some pretended revelation, or there's a lot of pretended revelations out there, a lot of people with theories that just are half-baked. And, uh, and it goes on to say, of the spirit or of a letter uh, allegedly being from us, from us to the uh, effect that the day of the Lord had already arrived and is here. And so people were writing false letters or people were having these happy theories. And let me just say, uh, I won't get into the whole content of what this chapter is about. I believe thoroughly it's about the, the um, rapture of the church and the fact that we are restraining the Antichrist from having full reign right now. And we'll get into one more scripture. But I, let me just uh, comment on that scripture right now. It is clear that... Any time a letter from anyone causes you to panic in that, it probably is not from the Lord. It probably is uh, somebody trying out their theory, uh, um, which, again, doesn't bring the peace, it passes all understanding. And I'm going to show you, because the Apostle Paul, when he writes the first le letter to Thess the Thessalonians, always brings in the good gospel, always brings in who you are in Christ Jesus. That should be our remaining message uh, even on the last day on planet earth, that should be the final thought that you are in Christ Jesus and greater is he that's in you. None of this fear and tribulation, all these different things. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on out in the world, but I want to encourage you today. It's not of God. He didn't do it, but he has the antidote for the situation. And so, yeah, this week we heard a lot of stuff and uh, we saw... Uh, George Floyd being murdered by the police. One police officer, don't throw them all under the bus, was a sad state of affairs. And you got to, there's so much going on so fast, you got to clear your mind with the Word of God. Get back into the Word of God. Stay with the Word of God because you're going to be challenged almost on a daily basis to fret, to worry, to get excited, and to be unstable like these people were because of a false and pretend letter. And we know uh, you could just spend two minutes on Facebook and, and uh, you could easily be moved in the wrong direction. 
And it goes on to say here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 again, it says, uh, do, not, do you not recollect that when I was with you and I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining the Antichrist from being revealed at this time? It is so that he may be manifest revealed in his own appointed time. So, uh, so there is a time where he's going to be revealed. But look at this here. It says, for the mystery of lawlessness, the hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority is already at work in the world. But it is restrained only until he who restrains it is taken out of the way. Well, so yeah, we see the lawlessness. We see groups like Antifa and all these criminals out there doing their criminal acts, looting and, and hurting people and so forth. And But the Antichrist is not revealed yet. So that's really the theme of this chapter. And it says he won't be revealed until he who restrains him is taken out of the way. Well, folks, you know what? We are the ones that restrain the full-blown um, Antichrist being revealed. So we must be taken out of the way. And that's, uh, some, that's why these people were upset. They were thinking that the day had already come and they missed it. Well, hey, the guys are still writing letters, are still around, so they missed it too. This is back in Thessalonians. And um, again, if it is, I believe in the rapture of the church, boy, you're going you're gonna to be gone in a twinkle of an eye. If it is the second coming of Christ and you're still here, then you can almost count down seven years of tribulation. And um, so, but these guys were in a panic mode for thinking they had missed the day of the Lord, which as it goes on to share is a rapture. But let me take you back a few verses earlier to First um, Thessalonians. Let me, let us stay with the gospel. Folks, we could go off, I could spend hours, even today, I could spend an hour. If you have the time, I'll, I'll do the preach. <laughs> we could spend hours sharing all the trouble that's in the world. But that's all I'm going to share with you. The rest I'm going to build you up on your most holy faith, for that's my responsibility to you as a pastor, to build you up. And you're going to see this verse that talks about supernatural power. So I'm going to just, you know, if you don't know how to preach, just grab an Amplified Bible, read it. It's, it's like a preach. Uh, that's why I use it. It's so simple. You have to almost uh, try hard to misunderstand it. But let's stay with what the Apostle Paul shared with the Thessalonians, who, uh, as you already saw in the scripture, they always had a theme of the Lord's coming, you know, the Lord's uh, appearing. Uh, and so we always want to have a hint of that with us. Yes, we are in the last days. But in the meantime, do not let your heart be troubled. In the meantime, you and I need to stay with what the Apostle Paul taught these believers. And uh, we'll start with chapter 1 and go to verse 5. For our preaching of the glad tidings, the gospel, that's what Paul was doing wherever he went. The preaching of the glad tidings, the gospel. Not all you wicked sinners and you evil people and, and scaring people and so forth. He was coming at them with the gospel. So we want to stay with the gospel message because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, which is healing, safety, soundness, deliverance, and security. So it says, for our preaching, the glad times of the gospel came came to you not only in word but also in our own inherent power of and in the Holy Spirit and the great conviction and the absolute certainty on our part you know what kind of men we proved ourselves to be among you for your good and this is the Apostle Paul who used to as he said he was the most wicked sinner he was the worst guy so if there's something that happened on his inside that caused him to be an example as he's coming to the Thessalonians here he says I'm going to be an example to you and follow us as it says here and you yourself set yourselves to become imitators of us so he's come to a certain higher level and through us of the Lord himself you understand what that's saying we are to imitate the Lord so we don't do that in our own ability our own strength we do that in the supernatural power that is available through hearing the good gospel preached to us. And it's, I'm going to show you how here, just in the verse down, down the street here. It says, it says, for we welcome your, 
our message, let's go back to the beginning of that, verse 6. And you set yourself to become imitators of us and through us of the Lord himself. For you welcomed our message. Are you welcoming me into your, your presence today? Welcome the word today. It is that, the power of God, that's going to change you. In spite of much persecution, with joy, we receive the word with joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you thus become a pattern to all the believers. A pattern. A pattern of joy. Can you imagine that? They're all saying, hey, we want to follow that man over there. That preacher from Victory Life. That person that attends Victory Life. What a pattern of success. What a pattern of joy. There's something changed in their lives. We knew them before. I shared a testimony just a, a few Sundays ago. How when I first got into the Word of Faith... I'm telling you, we were so hungry for the Word. We were so starved. We couldn't wait for the one time a month where we got to go to the full gospel businessmen to hear the Word of God. And I was so eager to learn the Word of God. It just, you can't fake it. You, you just know the Word of God is good and delicious. You just, you know, I used to work in a bakery at Prince George, my dad's bakery. I had to go to work at 3 o'clock in the morning, but I would spend... Uh, after coming from a full gospel meeting, I'd have books that I bought till they finally gave me the book table I was reading so much. And I would spend the next hours, would not, wouldn't even sleep, uh, just studying the Word, just so excited for the Word. This is exactly what it's saying. And and uh, the Word changed my life. I, came, I was, as I shared on Sunday, I was this miserable, depressed, uh, just, a, just a horrible introvert, who had no confidence in himself and uh, I was waiting for, you know, sympathy to, you know, move people in my direction. It just moved people away from me. They never wanted anything to do with me because he just, it, that's not the power of God working in you. But the word of, work, word of God is working mightily in us now. We aren't introverted. We're excited about the things of God. Every day is greater than the day before. We love life and it's all because of Jesus and all because of the word that we are applying like the Apostle Paul, I believe we have become a pattern. Now, we're not perfect. We're not saying that. I'm not tooting my own horn. And uh, I've made mistakes, a lot of mistakes. But I'm telling you, we pick ourselves up. We ask for forgiveness. We continue on in the things of God. And I believe we've become a pattern. And I know sometimes uh, we even have family phone us because they know <clears throat> we believe in healing. We believe the Word of God. We believe in the power of God. We've seen things happen. And uh, they phone us sometimes, you know, and they say, you know, can you pray for so-and-so? Because, you know, they won't say, because we've seen the pattern of success in your life. Um, but that's kind of the underlying message. They, they, you know, pray for us. Pray that something happens. Well, let me tell you a great report. I sat one time, this was uh, about five, six years ago, seven maybe. And I sat on the end of my bed in tears because the sciatic nerve was so painful in my body that... Um, I, I didn't know what else to do other than I took my hand, laid my hands on my butt end back here and prayed. And that was the last time I had a sciatic nerve problem. From that day forward, we received the healing power of God. Now, there's still other things we're working on. Praise God. We're not giving up because sickness and disease is not of God. It's of the devil. And we're so glad that we have the revelation knowledge of that, that when we take God's word, we become a pattern uh, for people in every area of our life. We should be the kindest people on earth. We should be the most loving people on earth. We should be the people that, my, my, have you, I want to be around those people. I want people to say that of myself and other, other people that are in the word of God. Those are the kind of people I want to be around because you're not going to be judged. You're not going to be condemned. There's going to be laughter and joy. And, and, uh, and you don't always have to talk spiritual things, but it should just be that warm, uh, 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 just a comforting thing to be around a child of God who has been working the Word of God into their life. Well, let me bring you to that scripture that talks about the supernatural power of God. Are you ready? It's found in Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And it says, And we also especially thank God continually for this here. What, Paul? What are you thanking God for? That when you received the message of God, which one? 
the good news gospel which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of mere men but as what it truly is the word of god which is effectually at work in you who believe exercising its supernatural human power wow the word of god is exercising its supernatural human power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it well that's it see it's none of my power it's not my ability it's not anything that we can do but this bible ha 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 came to us by revelation knowledge uh, while the words were written down the prophets wrote it down and the bible talks about revelation knowledge coming from the word of god remember when uh, uh, jesus was asking the disciples when he says who do men say that i am and all the disciples were sitting around one said well you're this and you're that and you're you're all, and they had all these natural terms and and so forth and then Jesus said, well, and again, Jesus wasn't having an identity problem. He wasn't asking them, you know, who do you think I am um, for, for trying to get built up himself? He was already built up in the Holy Ghost of power because he spent time with the Father. He spent time to build himself up on his most holy faith. Come on, folks, get off that couch after this recording. Get off and get into the Word of God. Walk the floor with joy this morning. Because that's what the Bible is talking about. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Putting the word of God first place in your life. You're going to be a changed person by the end of this week. It's only Wednesday. By Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're going to say, my, that worry has disappeared. That care has disappeared. People may look at you and say, what is different about your countenance? Your joy is different. It can happen that fast because the word of God is active and it's powerful. It's a supernatural power that comes into your spirit, man, and it's only for those that are born again. When you are born again, your mind receives. Remember last week I talked about, uh, do you mind? Last week I talked about taking care over, be careful, or, of, or about uh, something. That's what being mindful is. Be careful what you hear, what you see, what goes in here, because that drops down to your spirit, man. Feed your spirit, man, and all of a sudden, you're going to have an abundant harvest of whatever you put into your spirit, man. Well, I'm going to stick with what the Apostle Paul did. He turned into a supernatural human being. The power of God was on him, just like the apostles of old. From, from being such a wicked sinner, by his own admissions, he became a powerhouse for God. And that, what else do we want to do in these last days? Huh? I ask you, what else would you want other than be a powerhouse for God? What a, what, a, what a way to go out. What a way to enter into eternity. What if the rapture is, you know, one week down the road? What if the end of this world is coming a, a lot sooner than you think? I know the, the evil ones are planning for the destruction by 2030 or, you know, or, or get us all in line. But you know what? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Our retirement plan is out of this world. And it's so exciting that uh, forever and ever and ever, we're going to live with Jesus and we're going to have the most awesome time. You're just going to be in such a state of tranquility and joy, unspeakable. I mean, it's, it is so great. In fact, the Bible says he's going to spend all eternity showing us his kindness and his goodness. Well, let's get back to some of this supernatural power that is inherent in us hallelujah wow think about that it's like you're on holy ghost uh, well i don't want to use the word steroids but how about a testosterone boost you're on a holy ghost power on the inside building your spiritual muscles well if you go to hebrews chapter 4 again this chapter has such uh, relevant impact to all of us who are believers I'll start with verse 12 and then work our way through again. Uh, we'll see what we get to. For the word of God speaks and is alive and full of power. Full of power. Say that with me. Full of power. This is not, uh, and I always say this, pastors, don't get a, a freebie from the Lord. We must work our, uh, the word of God into our spirit, man, just like anybody else. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if you may think, well, we, we got a hand up somehow because the Lord has an anointing us. No, 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 no. There's the Bible talks about even pastors making shipwreck of their faith or uh, throwing away their ministries because of errors and mistakes. So we must, I must walk the floor this morning. I know I sat on my mom's couch this morning because I, I spent my night there again and I was getting up and I say, it is time to praise the Lord. It might have only been three to five minutes, but it is the first thoughts that I have. It is time to rejoice before the Lord. It's time to dial in this day. It's time to only, only meditate on his word, only think on the good things, only let not the word of God depart from my mouth, but only allow the things that are good, wholesome, and of a good report to leave my mouth. Because I know, see, I'm not an amateur anymore. I know, neither are you. You know, I know that the Word of God is powerful and effective. It's like a two-edged sword, as we already read here. It makes, it, it's active, operative, energized, and effective. It's a two-edged sword penetrating to the divining line or the breath of life or the spirit and of joints and marrow that is of the deep parts of, of, of the uh, nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Well, I want that. I want the Word of God to be doing some sifting in me. It's that supernatural power. I want that Word of God to, to you know how you sift soil, soil or you sift a grain or whatever? Only the good stuff remains. I don't mind it at all if that Word of God just gets inside of me and it starts sifting. So only the good remains. Only the good seed uh, remains in my heart so that I can uh, you, uh, see it growing. The kingdom needs to grow in my heart. So yeah, let the Word of God sift. It'll tell you, you know what? That's a self-pity thought. You know what? That is a, that is a, a thought of... Uh, um, or what can I say, doubt or unbelief, or that thought is not of the above, it's way below. Like the Bible says, the wisdom we want is the one from above, not earthly, sensual, or devilish. So I like the sifting of the Holy Spirit. Keep on sifting. Keep on reminding me uh, if I'm doing, you know, just, just a gentle voice of the Spirit on the inside. Hey, that that's not going to lead to victory. That's a judgmental thought. That's a a gossip kind of thought or that's a uh, a bad uh, decision kind of thought that's going to keep you know uh, I love it I love it when the Holy Spirit leads and guides Holy Spirit show me and guide me it's the most exciting thing I was reminded the other day of a uh, someone that was investing in stocks and he said before he ever invested in stocks he would uh, go into his closet and he would spend that time with the Holy Spirit who would sift and show them, no, this thought, this, this situation is wrong. Here's what you're not seeing over the hill. Here's what you're not doing by this investing, or, or you're not seeing, but the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Wow, through the Word of God. So put the Word of God inside of there and let it sift and carry you to victory. And so this man only, only always won only, only invested and saw profits in his business. Well, I'm going to rat on myself a little bit. I didn't always do that. I remember rushing into town one time and uh, made a bad investment. It sounded so good. It was a sure deal. The sure deal. You know, everybody was doing it and we got to do this. And so I sped into town, you know, broke the laws of speeding, whatever, rushed into town, put my check on the guy's desk and lost everything because I was dealing with a dishonest, crooked man. Yes, I have forgiven him, but he was a dishonest crook and he lied to everyone. The only comfort I guess I got is I wasn't the only one deceived, um, but I, I learned from that. You know, everything that is not, uh, is all shiny and, and stuff like that is not to be trusted. The Holy Spirit will show you what's over the, the knoll, over the hill, so that you will only do what is right and what is uh, proper in his sight. Well, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an intro into this chapter because this is all one thought of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says, uh, Therefore, while there is a promise of entering into his rest, 
This is Hebrews chapter 4, 1. Rest. That's what he wants for us. There's never a time in the Word of God, never ever, don't listen to people that tell you you're going to go through the tribulation, there's going to be great suffering and trouble and all that. The Bible says that might be happening, but not to those that are in Christ Jesus. Whether we go through the tribulation or whether we're out of here before, which I tend to believe beforehand, before, he wanted us to enter into rest. Say rest. Read the chapter. You're going to see what it said. He, he says, therefore, the promise of rest still holds and is offered today. It was offered to the children of Israel as it goes on to say in verse 3, 4, 5. Uh, verse 5 says, they forfeited their part in it. See, God never had them going 40 years into the wilderness because, hey, I just want to test them. I want to, I want to beat on my people. I love them so much, I'm going to beat on them. What kind of a ridiculous God is that? Not the Lord Jesus Christ, not the Father. And so the children of Israel had the right to enter into a complete rest in the promised land, the land full of milk and honey. Well, they missed it, but then the chapter keeps on going that there's another day of rest that's still available here. What's that all about? Well, it's the new day that happened under Jesus Christ. And now he's saying that we have an opportunity and we can see the Old Testament Israelites did not enter in and suffered. Every single one suffered. Then the warning is if you don't take this supernatural power word that we have and mix it with faith every day, every day you mix it with faith, you know, I'm, I'm healed, I'm set free, you know, with joy, God's going to work it out. If you don't mix it with faith, you're going to miss the rest that the supernatural power of God is, is trying. You can't blame God if you don't have rest today. He's trying to bring you into that. And he warns. And I, I need to spend a lot more time on this chapter, but read it for yourself. It, it warns, it says it's like a Sabbath day's rest that is still offered today. What kind of people is it offered today? It's to those that take the word of God, put it on the inside. It becomes like a day of Sabbath rest. See, there's nowhere in the New Testament, except for Colossians, which tells you, you don't need to worship on the Sabbath anymore. It was a type and a shadow. This is the other time the word Sabbath is mentioned and is in reference to a time of rest that we get when we take the Word of God. It's now a 24-7 deal. Uh, with, and It's basically the rest that we have in Jesus. But that's all I'm going to share with you today. Stay tuned even for Sunday's message. I just may continue with this here. It's, there's just so much to share. But make sure that you allow, as I shared uh, with you, the supernatural power, the good gospel word to enter your spirit, man, so that you can enter into that rest. Let it do the sifting between stupid thoughts, stupid ideas, worry thoughts, care, anxieties, all those things. You are free from all those. And the power of God will fill your heart and you will have days of heaven, even in the midst of a crooked and first generation or in the midst of what we saw on Facebook the other day, you know, the murder of a black man. It, 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 uh, you can get back into that rest or stay in that rest in the midst of all these evil things. God bless you and uh, have an amazing rest of the day. You're loved. Phone us if you need to. Uh, at 250-862-3044. That's Victory Life Church here in Kelowna, BC. We love you. Have a great day.